Look at all these people. I bet they all use vertical scrolling in their projects. Don't they know they can change things up and not reuse the same repetitive and unexciting practices? If only they knew how to create horizontal scrolling in Webflow to display their content. I can't just sit by and watch them go on like this. I should create a tutorial to help before it's too late and something bad happens. So here's the finished site here. When we load it, we got the elements that fade in. It's just some little graphic elements that I found off of Envato, a really great source. Got some cool images and graphics to utilize. And there's a little Lottie animation here flashing, encouraging the user to scroll down. And when we do that, we've just got another big long track here and this just has four different sections set up. And the first one is just an overview of the movie with some details. And as you keep scrolling downwards, it scrolls horizontally. And then it moves to the next full view section here, which is the cast section. I got these little hover cards here. And when you hover over the shark, you got the cast. Scrolling to the next section, it's just a big trailer. And then the last section is just kind of a parallax gallery image with some moving images. And then we have another big track on the bottom with just a big kind of scrolling shark, which is pretty fun to build. Just sharks swimming through the ocean with some fish. And these are all individual elements, which allows that layering, changing the Z indexes there. And it's all horizontal scroll, even though I'm scrolling up and down. And when you can scroll right back through it all. All right, let's break it down. So we're gonna have to have three separate elements to achieve this effect. The first one's gonna be a section that acts as a track to hold everything together. And then we're gonna have to create a div inside that that acts like a camera window that sticks to the viewport while the user scrolls through the project. So it kind of gives us that focused frame. And then the last div inside that is gonna be a frame element that horizontally aligns everything inside. So instead of stacking it, it's gonna push it all off the screen and we'll hide the overflow. So that way we can scroll horizontally and see everything. And then after all that's in place, we can add the actual content inside with the items and we'll add that scrolling interaction to make it all look great. So I have this here section already built out. I'm not gonna work through that. It's basically just a big div. These are all just little elements positioned absolutely and the little images and they're all just kind of floating in space there. And that's our hero. And in the body, I'm gonna add a section here, pressing Command K on my keyboard just to add another element inside here. This will be our section. I'm going to call this the content track. So remember, this is the big long track that's gonna hold all the information and we have our description, we have the cast, we have the trailer and the images. So that's four different sections if you think of them as full view sections. So since we're gonna be scrolling horizontally across four separate things, I wanna make sure the height of our track is 400 VW, right? So I'm gonna set the height to 400 VW. So that's 400% of the viewports width since they're gonna be lying side by side eventually. Right now they just scroll up and down. So you'll see it's four times the viewports height right now. But once each section's in place and has its 100 VW width, we'll have four of those lying side by side to equal the 400 total. Next, let's add a div block inside of our track. And this is going to be our content camera. This is gonna be kind of the window that we're looking into, so we're only seeing that one section at a time. So this means it has to be the exact same dimensions as the current viewport, right? So the user only sees that. So I'm gonna give it a width of 100 VW and a height of 100 VH. So now it takes up the full square of the screen. And to make sure this doesn't move as we scroll and it stays focused on that one viewport, we're gonna to have to make sure its position is sticky. So it sticks to the screen and we want it to start sticking when it hits the top. So I'm gonna position this top as zero. And now when the user scrolls down, it's gonna stop at the top and allow us to keep scrolling downwards, but keep that frame window in place. Now inside of our camera, I'm gonna add another div. And this is going to be our frame. So I'll call this content frame. 
And this frame is necessary because it's gonna allow us to position things side by side as opposed to the big long up and down that we currently have. This is gonna be where our things are gonna be positioned flex. So in the beginning, remember we, we set the height to 400 VW of our track. If we were to add items now, they would just stack on top of one another, but we want them to sit side by side, right? Because we're gonna be scrolling horizontally. So first I just wanna make sure our frame is the full uh, 100 VH, which is of its parent. So as long as we just write 100% of the height, it'll absorb the camera styling. So now with our frame, I'm gonna add flex box. So again, I've done some videos on Flex. It's a really important tool to know, but if you have your parent container set to Flexbox, you can move the items around in different orientations. So now instead of stacking block on top of one another, like the default, they're going to boo side by side horizontally. So now each item that we put inside of this frame will take up 100 VW, and there's gonna be four of them for a total of 400 VW, which is what our track's height is set as. But now that height, instead of being a vertical height, is a long horizontal height. Next, we can put all of our items inside of here. Command K, I'm gonna create a new div inside this. This is gonna be content item. And we want each of these four items to be 100 VW and 100 VH because they're gonna take up the whole screen while they're in that camera viewport. And an important step to take here is make sure we affect the sizing of the items inside them so they don't shrink or grow depending on what everything is. So we can just go to the sizing of this flex child since this is in a flex container, right? We're gonna hit this X, don't shrink or grow. And now our items aren't gonna to try to stretch or grow to fill the available space and they will be contained how we want them to. So right now we have one item taking up 100% of the viewport width, right? But we have the available space for 400% because we made that long track. So I can go ahead and create three more items with the same dimensions that we just set. So I'll just copy these divs, put them all inside the frame. Oops, I did an extra. So now we have four total, each with 100 VW, and now there's 400 VW total. So again, remember that our content frame is set to flex, which aligns everything horizontally. So now when I scroll through the right, I can see each content item taking up the full viewport as it goes by, and there are four of them, and then it stops. So just so we can see what we're working with here, instead of this big white background, I'm just gonna go ahead and add some images just to take up the space. So I have this picture of the jaws here. This is in our content item, and there's four content items. And this is just a placeholder to see if you had visual content. So as the user scrolls, there's different content available on each of the items, and it takes up however much space you want. You have kind of free range to work with inside of that div, the content item div, and you can build them out however you like. And if we go back to the finished product, you'll see here, I have the same thing in place, but I just have different content. So the first one was all that movie poster. This was the cast section, the trailer, and then the images in the back. But each of these frames is just the content item that we created. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy all the stuff that I had finished to add them into our new one. All right, so I went ahead and added all the content from our finished version. Nothing too crazy here. I'm not gonna go into each of the details, but it's basically just a poster, a div next to it with all this content. I uploaded a custom font. I think it's called Amity something, Amity Jack. That's the JAWS font, so I downloaded that. Webflow makes it really easy to go to the settings and upload any font you want. So now when we scroll horizontally through, we have each of the different sections in place. These are just cards. There's another little image absolutely positioned on top, so when you hover over it, the opacity fades down. You can feel free to clone the project and see how I built out each of these individually. This is just a video element linking to the YouTube trailer and some images. And when you scroll down, they just kind of move subtly over each other and they have different Z indexes, which allow them to do so and look kind of like that parallax effect. So I'm scrolling left and right right now. And obviously we don't want that. We want to be able to scroll up and down. And when I publish this, it would create that horizontal scroll bar, which is kind of a big no-no in web design, right? So to hide all of that, we're going to target our camera element and I'm gonna go here to overflow hidden. Because right now it's pretty large and wide, but we don't wanna be able to see all that initially. We don't have to scroll through it. So now when we preview it, I'm trying to scroll left and right and I cannot. But if I scroll up and down, you'll see on the right side, there's this bar that's moving. So I do have that available space. So now we just have to make sure that we can still access all the things we created. And that's where our interaction comes in. So we'll set up an interaction so we can move our frame from left to right as we scroll down. So let's select our track element. And I'm going to go over here to Interactions, and this will be a while scrolling in view interaction. And I'm just going to play a scroll animation, and I'm going to add a new one here. So this will just be horizontal content scroll. 
So we want this all to occur while the user is scrolling within that big 400BW track div. So that's where we set the interaction. But we actually want to target the frame div since that's what we want to move left and right and show each of the content items as we scroll around. So I'm going to click on our frame. Now it's targeted and I can hit plus, I'm gonna hit move. So we just have to make sure it goes from the first viewpoint to the last viewpoint. So at the beginning, 0% of our scrolling interaction, we want the X axis movement to be set to zero VW because that's the first thing in the frame, it's not moved yet. But then when we scroll 100% of the way through the interaction, we want it to move to negative 300 VW. And you'll see it bounces us right to the end already. And why is this? So this math comes from the fact that in that first screen, we already see 100 VW of the track, right? Because it's on that first content item. So if we're scrolling all the way to the end of the track, we've already accounted for that first 100. So we just want to move the rest of the 300. And since we're going to the left, it's going to be a negative value. So then that 300 plus the initial 100 equals the 400 of the total track. So even if I save this and live preview this, you'll see already I'm scrolling up and down and you'll see how the track is moving and it's going from zero to 300, negative 300 VW and then it hits the end. And you'll see how here when we first scroll down it starts going already. We want to be able to make sure it's all the way in view first before it moves away because we want the user to see everything that we made. So I'm just going to add a little offset here. So back where our animation is set up, I'm going to click at the 0% animation boundary. I'm not going to start the animation until it is fully visible in the screen. So now when I scroll down it's gonna make sure the whole thing is visible before it continues moving onward. Perfect. But you'll also notice when we hit the end of the track here, it does stop before we can even see the end. So we do wanna also add an offset to the end. So we do that by going here. So the animation boundary is towards the end. End animation, we're gonna add an offset. And something around 20% should be good. And now it'll allow you to go about 20% past that. So you'll see here that we'll see all the end of the content. And we're gonna add that next section at the bottom with the cartoon scrolling shark. But now this first track is in place. All right, so now I went ahead and added another track right beneath it. The setup is pretty similar. I'm not gonna go through exactly how I did this one. It's a similar mentality in the, in the structure behind the scenes. But basically there's a big background image of this kind of ocean that I made in Adobe Illustrator. So there's a big image that's stretching almost the width of the four 100 VW that we had before. So instead of four separate sections, I just made this one big section and that's the ocean div itself. So whereas in the content track we had uh, four content items, here for this I just have one big ocean div and I had to play around with the sizing because the image shrinks and grows strangely because it's a, an SVG image it's from Adobe Illustrator. So the dimensions are gonna be a little different if you're checking these out. But basically each of these things is just a little icon, again, made from Envato Elements. I just kind of found some files that somebody created and I took out the ones that I wanted and then compiled them all into this. Basically, it's uh, once you scroll past the thing we just made, I have another track starting right below it. And then it also does the same sort of scrolling animation. The only thing different on that animation is the fact that the shark is also moving. So if we look at this, we have our frame moving from left to right, that same kind of negative uh, viewport value, it pushes the content to the left as you scroll. But then I also just have the shark moving left to right as well. So it follows along with the user as they move, kind of give it that interaction like it's swimming. And then I have the different plants just positioned absolutely within the div. And they are different Z indexes, so the shark can be swimming in front or behind them over the different elements as you go. So then when we go to the top, we have that nice little kind of scroll into view, things fade in left and right, and the island welcomes you. Scroll down to our content first, wait till it's fully in the viewport, and then you can start scrolling. I'm scrolling up and down this whole time. We've got the cast hover div, awesome. We've got the trailer, we've got these images. And then when I scroll down, the other track starts, and then as I'm scrolling 400 VW or whatever that amount was, this is going to move and then the shark will follow, go from zero to 100%. Awesome. And then I can scroll back.
I'm right through it all, all up and down, no horizontal scroll bar. I'm trying to move left and right, but I cannot because everything's hidden and that's how we do it. Now, this is a fun interaction for desktop and laptop views, but it is not always the most user-friendly for those using tablet or mobile devices. So somebody may try to swipe left and right on a phone, but this interaction is set up so it only allows them to vertically scroll, even though the effect is horizontal. So it may be best to head over to your scrolling interactions here and just make sure they're not usable on the smaller devices. And you can just go here to the trigger settings. So say I wanted to turn this off on tablet, phone, and portrait. So now it wouldn't work that way. You just have to restructure the content now because it's not gonna look the same on smaller devices. It's gonna look pretty strange. So you'd have to kind of change the flex settings here and just hide that overflow again, make it visible. So. It would take some playing around, but for desktop and laptop views, it could definitely work. So that's horizontal scrolling in Webflow. If it's a little tricky for you to still visualize how this is working behind the scenes, I'll link to a video that Webflow has. That's where I learned a lot of this myself, and they have some more clear visualizations and graphics kind of showing how this is working structurally. And if you wanna see some more details about how certain parts of this project were made, I'll put the link to the Webflow project below. You can clone it and break it down further and try to learn something that way if that helps you. But in the meantime, Get out there, keep building things. But remember, if you're going to the beach this summer, look out for the sharks.